Hey you guys, Phoebe here from Little Grey Box with Matt behind the camera. Are you planning a New Zealand motorhome road trip? We just did one ourselves and we had an incredible time. So today we thought we would share with you everything we think you need to know to plan an amazing adventure all of your own. If you haven't already, be sure to go back and watch all three of our on the road vlog episodes from this trip, you guys, because it is going to give you a sense of how much fun you are going to have. Now, our trip was really focused on ski fields. We really wanted to get as much snow as possible and add in a few adventure activities and scenic spots as well. I would recommend figuring out what you want your trip to be about first and then devising your itinerary around that. You might be interested in hiking, adventure activities, food and wine or all of the above. So here's a look at our itinerary. We started in Christchurch, then we headed to Twizel where we spent one night, then we headed down to Wanaka for two nights. Next stop was Queenstown for two nights, followed by one night in Milford Sound. Then we went back to Queenstown for another two nights and up to Lake Tekapo for our very last night before returning the RV the very next day. Now, of course, you don't have to collect your motorhome from Christchurch like we did. There are plenty of collection points dotted all over New Zealand, South and North Islands, you guys. So be sure to pick one that works best for your itinerary and your travel plans. Last year, when I was researching Researching our Canadian Rockies road trip, I came across a brand called Motorhome Republic. And this year, when we started planning our road trip, I decided to reach out to them and see if they would want to work together because I really liked what I saw last year and what I saw this year when I started researching New Zealand motorhomes. Now, Motorhome Republic, you need to think of them as like a sky scanner for motorhomes. So I think the word is aggregate. <laughs> they pull together lots of different motorhomes in the one place so that you can see all your different options. Their website has so much information. When I was researching, theirs was just the most informative. Everything was up front. Everything about the vehicles was clear, what's included, what's not. There were no hidden costs. It just made sense to me. Not only that, but their rates were really good, you guys. Their prices were the cheapest I saw. We went with a Maui Platinum River Motorhome. And this is like your deluxe primo six berth, that means six people, motorhome. And it was fantastic. Obviously, the size of motorhome and the kind you decide to go with is going to depend on how many people are with you and your budget. We were three fully grown adults, two stinky boys and me, <laughs> in a motorhome and the six berth was an amazing size for us. It was so spacious. You get to pull up wherever you like in New Zealand and you can bring out your picnic chairs, make your lunch and sit there in nature and just soak it all in. It was just an incredible way to see New Zealand and I 10 out of 10 recommend. There are a few different options when it comes to parking your RV overnight in New Zealand. So let's go through those. You can camp free of charge on public land that isn't a recognized campground, you guys. That is freedom camping. The only thing is you can't park wherever you like, and if you do park in the wrong spot, you do risk a significant fine. I know people who have gotten them, it isn't fun. If you do think that freedom camping is going to be the option for you, you should definitely download the CamperMate app. With CamperMate, you can zoom in on the New Zealand map and find all the freedom camping spots. That's going to help you pre-plan where you're going to stay and make sure you avoid getting any pesky finds. A couple of things to think about with freedom camping. I believe it can get pretty busy with the freedom camping sites, especially in summer. So bear in mind that you might need to get there early to jag a spot. Your motorhome runs on a 12 volt battery that needs to be fully recharged every one to two days. And unfortunately, driving your motorhome probably isn't going to charge it up enough. So you will need to still check into a few RV parks here or there so you can recharge the battery fully. Lastly, you guys, just keep in mind in winter, it is going to be pretty cold. So not having access to that continual power might be a little bit challenging in terms of getting a really nice hot shower that's a little bit longer or getting your heater on and things like that. So just decide whether or not it's best for you. We decided not to go with freedom camping simply because we had the budget to spend on holiday parks. One step up from freedom camping is campable. Think of it as the Airbnb of the camping and 
motorhome world. <laughs> so basically people that have private properties that feel they have the space for motorhomes to pull up on, they list these on the campable website. And we found that the campable sites were cheaper than the RV parks and holiday parks, you guys. Now we decided to give campable a go. We booked two spots, one just outside Queenstown and the other at Lake Tekapo. We went to the first site and it was absolutely beautiful. The host was fantastic and it was really, really gorgeous. But here's the thing. <laughs> it was a little bit outside of town, a little further than we wanted to be away. There was no powered site hookup, which we knew in advance, but when we got there, the reality kind of set in after we'd been spoiled at holiday parks and we realized it was going to be a bit of a rough night because we couldn't get away from each other to go to the shower blocks and have a nice long hot shower. We didn't feel like we could run the heater all night. We were very worried about the 12 volt battery and things just didn't feel quite right for us. I think Campable is awesome. I think it's amazing. I think it's a great idea. It's great for money saving, but I also think it's probably best suited to some of you guys. I think unless you're like a hardcore outdoor adventure person, just go with the RV and holiday parks if you've got the budget. There are so many great holiday parks set up in New Zealand. It's like the country was just made for motorhoming and the people that run the RV parks know exactly what you need. We stayed at powered sites everywhere we went and we absolutely loved it. Even though we could have had showers in the RV, uh, we preferred not to. We just wanted to be able to, like I said, get away from each other, go to the shower blocks, take our time, have some space. We also really liked the facilities because we designated the motorhome toilet as a number one zone only. So it was great to be able to have toilet blocks to go to when needed. It was also just more convenient when it came time to dump waste and refill the water. And we had really great peace of mind every day that our 12 volt, volt battery was fully charged and we didn't have to worry about a thing. We stayed at a total of five different holiday parks dotted across New Zealand and you guys we would recommend each of these highly. We're gonna link those below for you so you can click through and check them out and see if they're a good fit for you too. We had a pretty even split between dining out and eating at the motorhome. Now what we decided to do was after we picked up our motorhome in Christchurch we went to the countdown supermarket near the airport and we stocked up on all of our essentials so things like you know olive oil salt pepper bread peanut butter all of that kind of stuff and we just had a little bit of a food kitty in the van so we were just buying a couple of days in advance there were plenty of supermarkets everywhere we went so it was not a problem and by buying small amounts we didn't feel so guilty then when we stopped for lunch or went out for dinner now one thing I would recommend is just to make the most of having all the facilities you need with you when you've got your motor home so like I said earlier we really enjoy just pulling up at a really scenic spot, making our lunch and sitting outdoors and enjoying those views. It's a really good way to make the most of it. It's going to save you money, but most importantly, it's just enjoyable. New Zealand is the adventure destination of a lifetime, you guys. If you want to get that adrenaline pumping, if you want to hit the snow, this is your destination. While we were very focused on our snow days, we also decided to throw in a skydive with the guys at Skydive Wanaka, which was so, so, so much fun. And there are a wealth of different activities you can do based out of Wanaka you guys so make sure you stick a couple of those into your itinerary. In Queenstown we visited two different ski fields we went to Coronet Peak and the Remarkables. Now the really cool thing about Coronet Peak is they have night skiing so you can go up there once the sun sets it is so much fun. They also have these great nights called Elevate where they have like live music and fire pits and you know pizzas and burgers and it is just a party up there we got to do one and it was really really fun. Now another thing we did was get the heart pumping with the Nevis catapult with the guys at AJ Hackett. Both Matt and I have done the bungee before. We loved it. This time we wanted to do something different and the catapult was really fun. One thing I would say is that you, if you are going up there do more than just the catapult. I wish we had. We had a really fun time doing it but it's over so quick and you kind of become this adrenaline fiend out of nowhere and kind of get your confidence up after doing the catapult and you're like I can take on the world. Do something that scares you you will not regret it it is so much fun we barely scratch the surface with activities I would recommend checking out some of the amazing outdoor things you can do in all the spots you're visiting because there is just no shortage I mean if you're going to visit Milford Sound for example there are scenic flights you can take helicopter rides up to glaciers you can go kayaking you can do Lord of the Rings tours there's snowshoeing there's even sled dogging 
dog sledding, there's backcountry skiing, there are so many different things you guys, so make sure you look into it, jam pack your itinerary with activities because those are the real highlights. Now your flights are probably going to be one of your major expenses and depending on where you fly in and out of, in our experience, flight prices can be different. So we often try to nab sail fares from Brisbane to Christchurch. We just find it's a little bit cheaper than flying into Queenstown typically. Now this time we decided to fly with Air New Zealand. We had a really great experience with them. They're a really reputable airline. In the past we have flown with budget airlines and we even did a snow trip with carry on only. We did it but it was rough <laughs> and I wouldn't recommend it. And that's why we went with Air New Zealand. We wanted to make sure we had our checked baggage so we could bring all of our snow gear with us and no regrets. I really liked doing it that way. Now, if you are flexible on your travel dates, I would just say that you might like to subscribe to your airline sale kind of notifications that they have. They seem to have sale blasts and that way you'll be notified when there is a sale on flights. There's also a free app, it's called Hopper. I've used it a few times and you just put in your travel dates and it lets you know when things go on sale or what the typically cheapest time to travel is going to be. So how much does a New Zealand motorhome road trip actually cost? Well, we kept a record of all of our expenses so that we could share it with you. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. Of course, this is just for our our itinerary. This is 11 days and 10 nights and it's also for three people. One other thing to keep in mind is that you can keep your costs down or you can blow them out if you want to simply by choosing a different motorhome, staying in different places or choosing different activities. And lastly you guys just to let you know all of these prices are in New Zealand dollars. The motorhome rental costs $1600 you guys and that include a $550 package which took our liability down to nil and included extras like snow chains, picnic chairs, tables, and all of that kind of stuff. We spent a total of $391 on fuel. We also opted to go with the express return package, which was $329. The reason we decided to go for that is because the New Zealand government charges a government imposed levy on diesel vehicles. And that is calculated based on the distance that you drive and it's charged when you return the vehicle back. So by doing the express return package, you cap that amount at the $329, but it also means you don't have to return the vehicle full of fuel or with a full gas slash propane tank either. We spent a total of $676 on RV parks and we spent a total of $1,033 on food. Our activities totaled $1,300 per person and our flights cost just short of $1,300 return for the two of us from Brisbane to Christchurch. So all up, you could reasonably be looking at around $4,030 for 11 days and 10 nights, you guys. And like I said, that doesn't include your flights or activities because those are really quite subjective. Realistically, for the amount of time we were there, we really only needed two pairs of jeans, two big snow ski jackets, two beanies, different bunch of t-shirts, thermal underwear, and two pairs of shoes, as well as your essentials, like, you know, your sleepwear, your underwear, that kind of stuff. But guys, do not overpack, because you really don't need anywhere near as much stuff as you think you do, and all of the RP v parks tend to have laundry facilities anyway, so you can keep up with your washing. One thing we really needed that we didn't pack was slippers, because the floor of your RV is cold, and you don't want to be wearing your muddy shoes around the place and dirtying it up. And if you can, I would absolutely absolutely recommend that you pack into a soft bag, not a hard shell suitcase, because when you unpack and take everything out of your bag and put it in all of the storage spots in the RV, which you absolutely have to, then you are stuck with a big hard shell suitcase and very few places to put it. So I want to finish this off by sharing with you our top five tips for having an amazing motorhome road trip in New Zealand. Number one, plan your visit outside school holidays, which is what we did this time. Our last trip we didn't and what that meant was everything was a little more expensive there was less availability at some of the places we wanted to go and stay at and the ski fields were far busier number two visit for as long as you can we were there like i said for 11 days and it went by so quickly new zealand is such a big place there is so much to see and do go for as long as you can in terms of taking time off work and as long as your budget will allow you guys because trust me when 
you get there, you'll wish you had longer. Another tip with time is just to allow a little bit of extra driving time because your RV won't be as quick as a car. Number three, go for the luxe motorhome if you can. We saw lots of people in smaller vehicles and it looks like it was a little bit of a tight fit. So if your budget does allow, go for something like we did with that Platinum River Home for Motorhome Republic. It was incredible and we just had an amazing time. It felt like a luxury holiday, not like we were on a budget and kind of skimping to save money. Number four, the first few days are going to be really clunky, you guys, as you get used to the motorhome life. We were all bumping into each other saying, oh, excuse me, can I shuffle past? And we were just making a mess and we were so worried about all the things that we had to remember because when you pick up your motorhome, they give you a lot of information and you're terrified that you're going to do the wrong thing and blow the whole motorhome up. But trust me, you will get the hang of it. And your first two days, they will be clunky. But after that, you will work like a well-oiled machine. You will know all about emptying the waste, refilling the water, turning the gas off. You will know how to move through that motorhome without bumping into each other. And you will actually develop some really easy ways to clear up space and keep things clean. New Zealand is the adventure capital of the world you guys so do something that scares you. Get outside your comfort zone, go skydiving, do a bungee jump, do something that challenges you and brings you out of your shell. Do something that you're going to look back on when you're old and grey and be so proud of yourself for doing it because if there's one spot to do it it's New Zealand. All right you guys that is it from us. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Now if you don't already be sure to subscribe and say Kiora in the comments below. Have a great weekend and I will see you next week. Love ya!